Welcome back. Let's learn about a couple new directives. There's a bunch of them, and they're really useful. Here you can see we're inside of our index.html, and we have our gem data. Let's add a new key and value to our gem called can purchase. We'll set it to false because we can't purchase this gem. Then inside of our index.html, there's a button there called add to cart, and we only want that to show up when can purchase is true. How might we use a directive to create this behavior? So here we'll use the ng show directive and specify an expression. That expression is going to be store.product.canPurchase. This directive is telling our button to only show if the value of its expression is true. In our case, it's false. So that button element won't show up on the page. So here we are in our web page, and as you can see, there's no add to cart button. However, if we go back into our code, change can purchase to true, and refresh the page, you'll see now it's there. What would happen though if we didn't have a can purchase property on our current gem? Well, Angular is nice enough to interpret that as a falsy value. So even without that property, it's not going to show the Add to Cart button. Let's add another property to our gem. We'll call it Sold Out. And if Sold Out is true, we don't want to show the product on the page at all. So we're going to use a directive ng show again. We can say ng show equals not store dot product dot sold out. Now there's another way we can do this, which is a little bit more readable by using the ng hide directive. So we can use ng hide store dot product dot sold out. So it's saying hide this product when we're sold out. And the HTML is a little more readable. What good is a store without multiple products? We only got one. So let's jump back into our app.js and change gem into gems. And you'll notice here, now we have an array with a little bracket. And now our products are equal to gems. Cool. But how are we going to display all these products inside of our index.html? Maybe a directive? If you think so, maybe you're right. <laughs> Let's check it out. So back in our index.html, we can print out each of these products to the screen by accessing their array index, as you see here. But this is not very dynamic, just listing out each of the products using their array indexes. So let's use a directive to iterate through each of the items in the array. To do this, we'll use the ngRepeat directive. The ngRepeat directive takes a special Angular expression in this case, we're saying product in store products. Store products is the array we want to iterate through. Inside of this element, product refers to the current product, and we can print out all of its properties. And this will get repeated for as many products as we have. So now if we jump into our browser, we can see that it shows us all of the products. In this level, we learned about four core Angular concepts. We learned about directives, which are HTML annotations that trigger JavaScript behaviors. We learned about modules, which is where our application components live. We learned about controllers, which is where we add application behavior. And lastly, we learned about expressions, which is how we get values displayed onto our page. With this understanding, I turn you over to the challenges, and I'll see you in the next level. You try your hands at writing a controller <laughs> like this. Angular rocks my socks. Yes, ship it done. <laughs>